Okay, this is a, an online toy theater workshop that the Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry is offering to you. It's the second of uh, our workshops this week. Felicia Cooper gave one on Wednesday, and we're planning to do more of these workshops, puppet making workshops, for those of you who are at home, which is probably most of us, or all of us, next Wednesday and next Friday at, at 2 p.m. here on our Ballard Institute Facebook page. So today's workshop is going to be about toy theater, and that's a toy theater right there. I think it's gonna be about a half hour long, and, um, oh, and it'll be fun. This is a toy theater, and uh, <clears throat> let me move the camera. <clears throat> we say uh, in the theater company that I'm a part of, Great Small Works, we say that um, there are five important things about toy theater. And um, the first important thing is that um, opening the curtain here and setting up the little cutout guys. This is a traditional English toy theater, as you can see. The first important thing about toy theater is that um, it has a proscenium arch, okay? This little arch right there, like a traditional 19th century or earlier theater. The second important thing about toy theater uh, is that it's miniature, it's tiny, so you can deal with in this case, it's a backdrop for the Battle of Waterloo and then some characters who don't really belong in that, but in that show. It's miniature, so you can create a whole world. The third important thing about toy theater is that it's made out of paper. So it's this material that is pretty common, I think, still, and even in the digital age, that you have a lot of, maybe, hopefully and is cheap. Uh, it's also flat, it's two dimensional. So we're not making puppets like um, Felicia Cooper on Wednesday made some puppets made out of paper too, that were, um, that were uh, three dimensional like many puppets. These guys are two dimensional, which is a whole interesting concept uh, that you can play with. And of, uh, of, uh, Finally, um, the fifth important thing about toy theater is that you can do it yourself. You can do it yourself. It's a home entertainment form that was started in England in the 19th century, and people performed the toy theaters um, in their homes. For example, this is an, an image of a um, uh, toy theater, an uh, English toy theater, and you can see how the performers are in a table in their living room somewhere. There's an audience. Uh, the woman on the on the right is reading from the script, and there's performers. That's a rather large toy theater. The dog is watching, which is very important. Just kidding. So anyway, that's that's the format, and there's been a revival of this form uh, that the company I work with, Great Small Works, has been involved with, and um, we have a little song that goes with the nature of toy theater and it goes like this if you can learn it <clears throat> I'll let you see the toy theater this is what toy theater is it's got an arch it's miniature it's made out of paper and it's flat and you can do it yourself so I'll spare you the short history of toy theater, which you can see online if you want to in the link that announced this Facebook uh, workshop. You can see that online, which goes into great detail with, with high scholarly uh, uh, <laughs> attributes, uh, goes into great t detail about the history of the form. So. Oh, the cool thing, or one of the cool things about this is that you can do it yourself. And so what we wanted to do is to uh, make a toy theater with you. And the materials that I have on hand are, 
like cardboard. So I've got some, um, I call it cereal box cardboard, but this is from a rice pilaf box, which I opened up. This is really good for the characters. I've got um, a cardboard box here. It's a corrugated cardboard, you know, like you get with a, it's a little got schmutzedig there. I don't know what that is. I'm going to cover that up. And, uh, you know, you get these from Amazon or whatever. I'm going to use this for my stage. And then I've got some um, colored paper here, some old cards some that we had. And I got some, um, some of this kind of green paper here. I took a bunch of images from um, the newspaper today. I, I, uh, I printed some images from the internet. And then we have a uh, glue stick, okay, which is good for gluing the paper on the cardboard. Um, I, I have a mat knife here to cut things out. I got scissors. Um, I, I wanted to do something a little bit fancy today, which was to um, put a little joint in a figure with some wire and some needle nose pliers. So that's getting a little fancy, but you don't have to do that. It can be very simple and straightforward. I also want, I have a stapler here to staple paper together or cardboard together. And uh, uh, I actually have the puppeteer's best friend um, staple pliers, which I'm going to use. That might be a, a bit arcane for a lot of folks out there, but it's really good for cardboard stapling. And I have some uh, bamboo skewers for uh, making puppet uh, rods for puppets, but you could use like a pencil, I think, uh, instead, or you can take a um, you can take a coat hanger and uh, cut that up and use that for puppet rods. Let me, let me share with you a, a traditional, this is a traditional, um, so I don't know if you can see that, a British toy theater control rod that sits on the deck of the theater and you can put the toy theater figure in there. That's like a professional thing, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, uh, so I think I'm going to use this box, right? And let me think about some images I want to use. So in the newspaper today, I found, like, I don't know if people get the, paper, the newspaper in print. You know, that's a thing of the past. When we started out, we would just take the daily newspaper and use that. So here's a picture of a guy running down the street. No one's there. Here's some... Um, a green line platform in the MBTA in Boston, which is where I live. Uh, some other interesting images I saw. Here's like a bunch of airplanes that are American airplane airlines airplanes that are grounded. I thought that was an interesting image. Um, here's an image of an empty, empty, <laughs> a lot of empty streets. But I thought I was thinking of like a background for my toy theater. And here's another image in color, right? So I'm just getting inspired by what's happening in the daily news, which is pretty serious, as you know. I thought here, here's an image of a, a Zoom meeting, uh, right? That a lot, a lot of, a lot of people are involved in those. A woman standing on a balcony. Here's a woman. Uh, she's a costume designer for Minnesota Opera. And she's sewing masks, and there's a couple of giant puppets behind her. So I thought that all of those images could be cool to use. I also thought of a text, like we like to use text and music. So I thought of the play, the poet Emily Dickinson. And here's a picture of Emily Dickinson I found online, and then I printed it out. So you can, and now with the, the interwebs, you can use any image or find any image you want, probably, right? Or if you're skillful with Photoshop or other digital programs, you can create your own images or you can draw. So like, for example, this is a drawing that um, Isaac Bell, our son made um, for a, a toy theater show about a demonstration. And he did these in Canada and emailed them to me and I printed them out. So that's just, you know, hand drawing. If you like to draw, you can draw whatever figures you want. So, um, as I was saying, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna get, I'm gonna stand up here a little bit. Okay. And um, try to figure this out. Okay, so this is the box I'm gonna use, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is, um, it's a regular box. I, I don't think that's an animal. Anyway, we're gonna cover that up, this part. But this little flap down here, I'm gonna cut that off, right? And I'm gonna make the inside of this box the stage. It's pretty, it's not very uh, deep, you know. You could use another type of box, like here's a, um, a smaller box I could use, but I decided I wanted to use this box. And um, I think because my Emily Dickinson figure will fit in there. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the proscenium work in a very rough and fast way by attaching this piece of, it's half of the flap I just cut off. I'm gonna staple it to here, okay? Like that, maybe like that, okay? Now I'm gonna use the staple pliers. I could use my stapler here. I don't know if people have staplers. That kind of worked, but this is really gonna work. Sort of, actually that didn't work, did it? Okay. And I'm gonna staple it here. You could also tape it or glue it or, um, sorry, I'm gonna move the thing back a little bit. You could tape it or glue it. I thought you could even just use a, um, a, uh, a binder clip, you know, um, uh, that people have lying around. I've got hot glue too that I'll use. I don't know, that's that's a real a crafting item that a lot of people have, right? Your old hot glue gun. That's really good with paper and cardboard. So here's my, that's my toy theater for now. Now I'm gonna, um, I wanna operate my toy theater puppets in the theater. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up the side of the toy theater uh, and also the other side, stage right. And then I'm also gonna open the top so I can um, uh, operate things from above. So first I'm gonna open it from the side. Okay, open the side up with my, I think, with my mat knife. Okay, here we go. When you're, when you're cutting into a box like this, you need to be kind of careful First, be careful not to cut yourself, but you don't want to cut away so much of it that the intake, the structural integrity of the box is compromised, and then it all collapses. So I'm, I'm going to open up this side entrance here, and I'm going to cut it off at the at the bottom, you know, of the stage floor or the deck, as we say in theater, so that puppets can slide in. Let me. Puppets can slide in. I'm not going to leave a lip there, which makes it harder for the, pup the puppets have to hop over. <coughs> excuse me, hop over the lip. I could do the same over here. Uh, cutting it like that. Okay. And um, our friend Eric Poirier from France, who's a toy theater performer from France, he commented on a the Facebook posting about this workshop. He said, oh, toy theater is the perfect thing to do right now because you're, you're inside your um, house in your living room and looking to do stuff. And here's the thing to do in your living room. Getting an audience is a different matter. So here, this is sort of what I've got so far. I'm gonna open up the top. I think I'm gonna make a slit in the upstage at the back um, edge of, the theater, so I could drop in, I think I want to drop in a, be able to drop in a backdrop and change the backdrop. One of the interesting things about 19th century toy theater and 19th century theater in general is the interest in um, transformation. And transformations are really interesting to do with puppets so you, know, you can change the scene. So I've got my box here, right? That's the proscenium, 
and I can bring things in from the top. Wait a minute, I'm going to open this up a little more. Maybe or not. I'm going to make another here. Okay. A thing I like about toy theater is that you can be as simple or complicated as you want. Okay. So now I opened up the top there. I'm going to, if I want to, I can operate puppets from that slot. And I'm thinking I'm going to slip in backdrops there, but who knows. Now I want to decorate it. So I think I'm going to use this blue, um, this blue card stock that I have, these old cards. And I'm just going to, I'm using the hot glue gun. I don't know if you have a hot glue gun. But you could just glue them on. Whatever you've got sitting around. Ooh, I need a new. I'm going to ask my friend Trudy. Could you get me a glue stick, Trudy, from the basement? Because I, I didn't bring up enough glue sticks. Okay. Maybe uh, for this one, I'm going to use my, um, my, uh, my regular glue situation, this the regular glue stick. I'm just gonna put the glue on there. How are we doing? It's not so bad. Gonna angle it up there. And that that first toy theater you saw, this one, of course, this had a pretty elaborate proscenium decoration, right? And you can sort of go uh, get as elaborate as you want to with with the proscenium. I'm going to staple it here. Although I think my friend is coming with a glue stick. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I needed a hot glue stick, but that's okay. We're, we're flexible here. We can work with whatever we've got. Stapling it right there. Then I'm going to make this attach this here I'm not gonna I don't think I'm gonna I have time to really decorate it too much but um I thought that um you know you could you could write you know, on the top toy theater of coronavirus or something like that I'm gonna add this in for some reason you could make it really fine and and a finish or you can make it rough like this uh, there's an Ing ingmar bergman movie fanny and alexander that begins with a, i guess it's fanny and alexander playing with a toy theater this is kind of funky but but it'll do oh thanks trudy for the hot glue stick that fits right into the hot glue gun okay mm -hmm. so i have this toy theater and i th i i uh i took um from a calendar um i I, if, I don't know if you have a printer or a copying machine but i decided to use that image right there as a backdrop i think i'm going to use that i got some others i have this one for a um a, a zoom meeting what else do i have i don't have that many others okay i'm gonna uh set this aside for a moment and i'm gonna work on a, my puppet so i found that picture of um uh of emily dickinson and i cut it out and then i i misplaced my piece of cardboard. What is it under the computer? No. Okay. I'm gonna make a new piece of cardboard. Where is that? Oh, here it is. Okay. So um, I decided I I want to make uh I'm gonna I'm gonna I cut out Emily Dickinson's torso, and then I cut out this piece of cardboard, and I'm gonna mount it like that, and I'm gonna make her a character. So first I'm first I'm going to back this right here. So I got my piece of cardboard. I'm going to 
use the glue stick. This is like a, seems like this is a younger version of Emily Dickinson, who of course is the famous American playwright who lived in Massachusetts, just, you know, a few hundred miles west of here. I'm gonna cut, cut it. I glued the, the image onto the cardboard and I'm gonna cut it out. And again, it could be a rough cut, you know, with the scene showing or you could spend a lot of time you can work with a an exacto knife which gives you more control i'm grabbing my mat knife can you see that and i'm going to just cut around the edges here of the image and like that so wank 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 there we go and here if we had more time, we could spend hours making characters and cutting them out and figuring out how they move. Okay, now, um, and here I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna give her a green skirt, okay? And um, uh, using this green sort of crepe paper that I happen to have lying around. I could use cloth, I could use crayons, or I could colored pencils, I could color something in. And I think I'm gonna just like do a fast and dirty version of this. I'm just gonna put some glue on the puppet thing there. And then, what you know, which could be other kinds of glue. And I'm gonna just sort of Glomp that on there. What's that look like? I don't know. I'm gonna. If I had more time, I might do pleats or something on her dress, but I don't have time. I've got a Zoom meeting coming up after this. Got us ready for the Zoom meeting. So um, let me cut this off here. Okay. Cut off a little too much. Gonna do some back on. That's okay. Whatever. Okay, rough. Maybe I'd paint her shoes black. Okay, so now I'm thinking I'm gonna make it so her she has a little movement here. So I'm gonna um, take I should get like a push pin, which I don't have as a matter of fact. And I'm gonna um, make a hole here. Okay, making a hole right there. And then I'm making a hole in the other half, the other part of the, where do I want her to be? Like that. I'm gonna make a hole in the other side. Okay. Now I'm gonna take, a a piece of wire which I happen to have so if this is getting too complicated because you don't have wire no worries I just thought I'd do this because I uh, like to make these kind of so just to show you what's possible so now I'm making I'm make winding wire around my needle nose pliers like that and then I'm going to bend it 90 degrees and I have like a little button there, okay? And then I'm going to run that through the hole I made, okay? And run it through the second hole so it's tight. Okay, then I'm folding it, bending the wire there, and I'm doing the, the, doing the same thing I did at the beginning, making another kind of button, just winding the wire around uh, this way, if you can see that, okay. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess. And now um, I have a, she can move. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna operate her from stage left. So I'm gonna take 
one of my skewers, which could be a pencil or a piece of wire or anything stiff. And I'm, for the sake of timing, just going to hot glue that right there, okay, right there. And then I'm going to hot glue the bottom so I have two controls for this puppet right there, okay. So I, um, you could spend a lot of time doing this. So I've, I've hot glued my two rods to the puppet. And now I can operate it. I go, oh, hi, I'm Emily Dickinson. Whoops, waiting for the hot glue to dry. OK, so I'm going to set that aside, I think. And what have I got? I've got my, um, where is it? OK, this is the time when talk amongst yourselves um, I wanted to find my uh, my backdrop pieces which I've carelessly tossed somewhere around the, the dining room area here um, okay Oh yeah, that's it. So, so maybe I. So thank you, Trudy. I found this one. I'm gonna back it on a piece of cardboard, which I'm gonna find somewhere in our house. I'll be back in five minutes. No, actually, I won't. Um, here's a piece of cardstock I found. So I'm just gonna get my my. Uh, glue stick and I'm gonna put this there. I also wanted to find, I had a piece of paper that had our, uh, that's it right there. Okay, so what do I want? That's kind of the wrong season. It's a beautiful picture of fall, but I don't wanna use that. Maybe I'll use, uh, one of the images from the newspaper that I was showing you earlier, which I, like this one of the guy running in the street, in the empty street. So uh, I'm going to cut that out of the newspaper. Okay. And I'm going to to maybe attach that to a piece of cardboard that I happen to have lying around with my glue stick, moving this down. So I'm going to go like that. OK. So we like the way that this allows us to talk about um, talk about what's happening around us. It, it's kind of, we base some of our work on an old 1930s um, form of theater called the Living Newspaper, which was uh, initiated by the Federal Theater Project during the Depression, and people would do theater stories about the news, which is actually the invention of a new way of doing theater. But when we started doing toy theater, uh, we liked the idea of, of basing it on the news. So here, which one is the real one? I don't know. Oh, I think, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's right side up. Okay, very good. Okay, so now I have my backdrops. Okay, I've got um, I've got my Emily Dickinson puppet, and I've got a few other characters here that are already pre-made. Right, I want to come in from stage right, and I think for the the toy theater, I'm I'm just going to add some more 
um, paper, some backdropy type material here. And I think I want, I think I'm going to make it green because that'll be in contrast to the, um, to the blue. And um, I'm not cutting it too, too short. And I'm doing it super fast. Okay, that's all right. And again, for the for the sake of for the sake of speed and timing, because I'm going to go a little bit over our regular scheduled time, I'm just going to hot glue it in there. Okay, so there we are. So, um, and I'm going to write, you know, toy theater. Toy Theater of Emily Dickinson or something in honor of the coronavirus. And I'm going to put my backdrops in, um, in what fashion? Hmm. Well, maybe I'll do them one after another. I'm going to do this one first, then this one, and then this one. Okay. What did I say I do first? Okay. So... I'm going to do this one first. My hands are going to show. Maybe I'll put it right side up. My friends who work in television are very used to looking at a monitor where everything's, the puppets are all reversed. Me, no. So, okay. And it's going to go like this. Oh, hi, Fred. Hey, Fred, it's me. Fred, are you jogging down the street? Oh, yeah, right. We can't talk to each other very well. I'm, I'm jogging. I'm jogging. I can't talk to you right now. No one else is here. All right. I'll just continue my walk. Uh-oh. Okay. And he walks across the stage. Then scene two, let's make it this. I'm gonna slip this through the top of my, my backdrop and destroy the theater in the process, which is not a problem. Okay, and now it'll be, let's see. Oh, I, I guess I'll go see my friends. And, um, I'm gonna use my Emily puppet here. This is Emily at the at the Zoom meeting. Oh, hi, Emily. Hi. How's everybody doing? Well, I well I'm I'm used to being sort of in solitude in Amherst, and I write poetry and walk around the yard. Oh, really? Can you uh? Can you mute your mic, please? I'm hearing a cat or something. Okay. So long conversation ensues, end of scene. And then I thought the last scene would be this one uh, here. I'm gonna slip this in like that. And then, um, right? And maybe she comes in and, uh, let's see, I got, this is her. I only, I, if I had another person helping me, I could, but I don't, okay. And then I, I'll recite the poem. A lane of yellow led the eye unto a purple wood, whose soft inhabitants to be surpasses solitude. If bird the silence contradict, or flower presume to show, in that low summer of the West, impossible to know. So that's, um, that's a short toy theater show with Emily Dickinson and coronavirus for some reason. So, um, that's one way to do a toy theater. 
um, we could sing the song again. This is what toy theater is. It's got an arch, it's miniature, it's made out of paper and it's flat and you can do it yourself. And if you want to, if you're inspired to make a toy theater and why not, it's not like you're doing other stuff. No, you probably are doing other stuff. Um, please uh, videotape, you know, videotape it like, or not, or make a video copy of it and post it on this page or some other page on the Ballard Institute and show us what you come up with. We'd love to see it. I did want to give a shout out to Great Small Works, the company I work with. We're doing a live uh, or a, a online toy theater festival next Thursday and Friday, April 2nd and 3rd, 2nd and 3rd. And also um, the Ballard Institute is sort of shifting all its programming online. So there'll be, as I said at the onset, uh, there'll be more puppet workshops uh, next Wednesday and next Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Also in the weeks following, we're also hoping to do um, discussions with puppet artists as forums and other presentations of Yukon puppet art student work uh, and uh, images from our current exhibitions in our museum, which is closed. So the, finally, um, I wanted to mention if uh, you'd like to help us help to support the Ballad Institute by making a donation, you can do that. I think my, my friend, uh, my colleague Emily Wicks might have posted the site where you can um, make a donation to the Ballard Institute if you want. That's the end of our toy theater workshop from the University of Connecticut's Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry, part of the School of Fine Arts. And um, have, have fun with your toy theater, entertain yourselves, do great work and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.